Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. I hope everyone is doing well and big news coming out of VMware Explorer 2022. Arguably the headline or eye-catching announcement for most BI admins is vSphere 8. Yes, vSphere 8 was announced today at VMware Explorer 2022. Stick around, we're going to take a deep dive into several of the major new features and capabilities of vSphere 8. There are certainly many great new features for vSphere 8 that will help to take the solution to the next level. The first thing that we're going to key in on is the guest OS and workloads virtual hardware version 20. So as you know, if you're a VI admin for any number of years with each subsequent release of vSphere, typically there is a bump in that virtual hardware version. And what that does is it exposes new features and functionality from a virtual machine perspective that can take advantage of additional enhancements and features underneath the hood with vSphere. And as you can see, we'll just read straight from the tech blog. The virtual hardware version 20 is the latest hardware version. It's going to be able to take advantage of the latest Intel AMD CPUs with device virtualization extensions. Uh, notice under guest services for applications, the new vSphere data sets. We're going to explain what those are. Application aware migrations, the latest guest operating system support such as Windows 11, as well as performance and additional scalability. So new configuration maximums here is what we are reading into. So up to eight vGPUs, a new feature called device groups, which we will detail that in just a moment, as well as high latency sensitivity with hyperthreading. As we mentioned with that new virtual machine hardware version, new features and functionality have been added. And one of those is the support of additional guest operating systems, including Windows 11. So enterprises everywhere are starting to look at how do we migrate to Windows 11? How do we use that in our VDI infrastructure? So one of the really cool features that they have introduced, as we all know, Windows 11 requires a TPM device. Well, in a virtual machine, that is going to be a vTPM or virtual TPM device. How do you clone that virtual machine with a vTPM device without compromising security? So the problem here is, or challenge, if you have a Windows 11 machine that you want to clone, if you clone that source Windows 11 machine, you are essentially cloning the vTPM device along with the TPM secret. So that is definitely not a good thing from a security perspective. So VMware has introduced something they call a TPM provisioning policy. So what this allows you to do is essentially clone a Windows 11 machine and it essentially strips out that TPM and allows it to be recreated with a unique TPM secret for each cloned machine. So this bolsters security at the same time as allowing you to clone those Windows 11 boxes with a vTPM device. Just a moment ago, we mentioned about the new vSphere data set that is included in vSphere 8. What is this new vSphere data set? Well, vSphere data sets are a new way through using special APIs that information can be shared between the vSphere management plane as well as guest operating system. Now, there are some requirements here. You must be running uh, VMware tools, and I do believe that virtual machine hardware version 20 is required for this new uh, functionality. What are some examples of information that can be shared between the management plane and the guest operating system? VMware mentions several use cases, uh, which include guest deployment status, guest agent configuration, or guest inventory management. So no doubt there are going to be some new and interesting use cases that can be fulfilled using this new guest data sharing by means of the new vSphere data sets in vSphere 8. vSphere 8 has a new concept called device groups. Now device groups are a pretty cool uh, new feature that allows vSphere to detect and add 
groups of devices to virtual machines. And currently, uh, network interface cards and graphics processing units or GPUs are compatible with this new device group uh, construct. So when you add a device group, uh, you're adding a group of hardware to a particular virtual machine. Now in the host, these may share the same PCIe switch or devices that share a direct interconnect with each other. So vSphere is gonna have that intelligence to know, hey, I can manage this group of devices and present this group of devices to virtual machines. And this is gonna make the uh, pass-through and other uh, virtual hardware that can be presented to a virtual machine uh, much easier to manage since they can be uh, managed in a group format instead of in a single nature. Arguably, one of the headline features of vSphere 8 is the ability for vSphere 8 to take advantage of new data processing units. These are special system on chip cards that essentially are mini computers that you can install in a server host. Now, this opens up a whole new range of possibilities and capabilities and feature sets that no doubt we're going to see expanded upon in uh, many iterations of vSphere versions to come. As you can imagine, this is going to provide many advantages, both from a security and a performance perspective. Because not only is vSphere 8 capable of being installed on these DPUs or data processing units such as SmartNix, but also ancillary services such as uh, NSX are going to be able to take advantage of these data processing units. So all of that CPU horsepower and resource uh, consumption that is required to run security services, for instance, with NSX can now be offloaded onto these DPUs. So it's going to be a tremendous savings on resources that can be offloaded from the CPU onto the DPU. Additionally, when you think about security, having your uh, vSphere management plane running in a totally separate environment uh, with a DPU uh, as opposed to running on the CPU where all of your virtual machine traffic and processing is happening, there obviously is going to be many security advantages to that configuration. vSphere lifecycle management has also received new enhancements and updates in vSphere 8. As you would imagine, it had to be overhauled to support many of the new architectural changes such as DPU support. So first and foremost, vSphere Lifecycle Manager can in lockstep keep the vSphere installation on your DPU uh, aligned with the installation that is installed on your ESXi host. However, there are also other things to note and capabilities with vSphere Lifecycle Management. One of the first things is, as we've all expected, vSphere Update Manager, the baseline configuration that we have used for many versions now in many years, has finally received the notice of deprecation. So you want to start thinking about how you can now go to the new image-based process with vSphere Lifecycle Manager. So that has been deprecated. Another thing to note that they have added with the cluster remediation is you can now stage the updates uh, before you place hosts in maintenance mode. So it's non-disruptive to workloads or a maintenance period as such that you have to uh, instantiate. Rather, you can stage all of those updates prior to actually performing the update mechanism using a maintenance mode and all of the uh, other uh, processes that we're used to. Another really cool thing that they have introduced that I think is, is going to be nice for VI admins is the ability to perform parallel remediation. So you may have enough resources, enough hosts in your cluster where you can actually remediate multiple hosts at the same time. So instead of having a single host go down in maintenance mode, migrating workloads, we can now have a parallel update mechanism of those hosts in the cluster so that more hosts can be remediated at the same time. So that's a really awesome feature with this new updated uh, vSphere lifecycle management in vSphere 8. 
Configuration management in your vSphere environment is an important part of overall security and to make sure that all of your hosts and clusters are configured consistently. And that leads to a better operational experience as well as better security. Previously, we've had to do this with third-party tools or scripting using Ansible scripts, PowerCLI, uh, and the list goes on and on. But it's really encouraging with the release of vSphere 8 VMware has introduced something called vSphere Configuration Profiles. The new configuration profiles help to prevent configuration drift across your vSphere clusters. Now, VMware makes note that this is still in active development. So in the GA release of vSphere 8, it's probably going to be fairly sparse. However, I expect as we see those update releases, update 1, update 2 of vSphere 8, no doubt this is going to receive a lot more functionality and features. With each new release of vSphere, VMware has concentrated efforts on ensuring that applications are not affected by infrastructure operations. And they have created a new concept in vSphere 8 of migration aware vMotions. So in other words, you if you need to transition a virtual machine to a different host, there are steps that we can do that more gracefully now at the application level. So some orchestration is going to be possible with this migration aware uh, functionality, such as stopping services potentially in a guest operating system or performing a failover in the case of a clustered application that's running inside of those virtual machines on top of vSphere 8. Again, going along with new application features to help bolster the performance of applications running on top of vSphere 8, latency-sensitive workloads, such as those that may be ran by emerging telcos, workloads that require extremely low latency, these workloads can now have what's called high latency sensitivity with hyperthreading. And it does require that uh, the virtual machine is running version 20 of the virtual hardware. But as you can see, it's an advanced setting that can be set on a virtual machine. And what it essentially does is it allows a virtual machine's vCPU to be scheduled on the same hyper-threaded physical CPU core. So there's no disparity there between the cores. It's actually running on the same physical core in the physical server host. And all of that helps with ensuring that any latency sensitive applications are unaffected. In vSphere 8, VMware is giving VI admins even more simplified control, NUMA nodes. Now, virtual NUMA is extremely important when it comes to uh, performance, latency, if NUMA is not configured correctly. However, uh, VMware has essentially allowed and exposed in the vSphere client a simplified virtual NUMA configuration. So in vSphere 8, with a virtual machine running hardware version 20, it allows you to essentially use that vSphere client to configure vNUMA topology for virtual machines. And as you can see in the screenshot that they have under CPU topology, you actually have a NUMA nodes configuration option. And another new slick feature that they have underneath the VM summary tab is a new CPU topology uh, tile. And what this does is it actually gives you a better view, a uh, consolidated view of the cores, the vCPUs, the sockets, threads per core, as well as the NUMA node. So you can get kind of a full picture of your virtual CPU configuration and NUMA configuration in a single location. Well, if you're like me, you are ultra excited to get vSphere 8 into the home lab as well as production environments. This is going to be a fantastic new release, many new features that we can take advantage of both in the home lab as well as the enterprise. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the new features that we've covered. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, so I'm going to leave links uh, to the uh, official VMware documentation as well as my posts covering the new features in vSphere 8. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys soon.